five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts of five alarm and fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Fire. Fire. <laughs> Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a moment, we'll join young Jimmy Collins and his sister Trudy as they leave the gloomy old Wilcox mansion behind them and start down the hill for home. They wouldn't have gone there in the first place if Jimmy hadn't been anxious to get a donation for the antique sale the junior firefighters are putting on. Once they'd stepped inside those dark, cluttered rooms, it was only too easy to believe what people had said about the house, that it was haunted. Well, in a way, it was. We'll find out how in just a minute. Let's go, firefighters. Let's join our two young friends, Trudy and Jimmy Collins, as they hurry away from the old mansion that had made them feel so nervous. You couldn't blame them. It had been kind of scary when old Mrs. Wilcox called them up to the attic. But even if she was a bit peculiar, Mrs. Wilcox had proved willing to help the junior firefighters' antique sale, and Jimmy was sure the rare cup and saucer she'd given them, as well as the ancient snuff box, would bring in a lot of money. In fact, that's what he was thinking about when Trudy suddenly said... Jimmy, didn't you hear that? What did you say, Trudy? Oh, that scream from the haunted house. Oh, gosh, don't start that again, sis. It was bad enough while we were... Listen! Say, somebody up there is screaming at that. Well, let's run, Jimmy. I'm scared. Oh, but, well, that's no ghost. It must be Mrs. Wilcox. Oh, what did I tell you? There she is, leaning out the attic window. I didn't have to. Look, you can see the flames in back of her. Oh, dear. Trudy, Mrs. Wilcox is alone up there in that attic, and it's on fire. What can we do, Jimmy? What can we do? Help her, of course. You go down... Oh, and... but, Jimmy, there's nothing we can do to help. Of course there is, Trudy. All you have to do is keep your head and know what to do. There's a fire alarm box at the corner. Now, do you know how to turn in an alarm? Well, I, I think so. Break the little glass window and pull the lever. Then wait for the trucks. I'm going back up there. And, Trudy, run all the way. Oh. This is when every minute counts. A moment later, Trudy has reached the alarm box. And even as she pulls the lever, this miracle of science is tapping out its identity in the fire department telegraph bureau, the nerve center of all operations. Chief Cody immediately stops talking to the dispatcher. For he knows a moment of quick and decisive action is ahead. The alarm signal is an old story with him. Almost automatically... His mind translates the message it is delivering. 7-3, box 73, corner of Waycross and Burr. Frame houses, but not too many of them. Old mansion on the hill there. I expect engine company... Great blazing blisters. It could be the Wilcox mansion where Trudy and Jimmy went. Mrs. Collins would never forgive me. I'd better get out there and see that the dispatcher sent Tim's outfit as well. Seconds later, the alarm signal has been channeled to the proper stations, including the rescue company. Almost as if by magic, Tim and his buddies appear through the circular opening in the ceiling, hurtling down the brass pipe. And almost as their feet strike the deep rubber pads on the floor, they're dashing to their positions on the truck. The driver is already there. Tim is thinking, I don't like this. Good grief, maybe Mom was right to be worried about the kids. This alarm comes from right near where they are. Well, I've got a personal interest in this. All right, let's go, boys. Let's roll! Meanwhile, Tim's younger brother, Jimmy, has raced up the stairs to the third-floor attic in the Wilcox mansion. It takes only a glance to see that the closet in which Mrs. Wilcox has stored all those queer, old-fashioned clothes is blazing dangerously. Oh, oh gosh. That's going to start spreading quick to the wall and then the ceiling. Are you all right, Mrs. Oh, Wilcox? Yes. yes, help me move this trunk away. All right. You let me push All it. my wonderful, priceless things stored up here. That's a trouble. There shouldn't be yeah. so much stuff piled up in here. Gosh, you can't move it now. It's too late. The house is going to 
to burn down. I lose everything. Well, maybe it won't if we keep our heads. We can't waste time moving any more things now. I don't suppose there's any water pipe up here to the attic. Oh, no. There's an next floor down in the bathroom. Well, that's no help right now. We better leave the water to the firemen. Firemen? They're coming? You called help? Sure. They'll be here before you know it. Now, you go downstairs Oh, no, and... no, no. I'm going to stay right here. Everything that means anything in the world to me is right here in this room. But it's getting awful hot and smoky. <laughs> I don't care. I won't budge an inch. Well... I can't make you, Mrs. Wilcox, but you will have to get out of the way so I can close that door. Close the door? We'll suffocate. Well, that's a chance firemen take. If you want to go... Uh, and... No, no, and don't you give me orders, young man. Look it, there's a downdraft from that stairway going downstairs. It's pulling smoke and fumes and hot air this way. I can see that for myself. But it'll spread the fire downwards. And if you want to save your house, you'll get out of my way, Mrs. Wilcox. Well, if you really know what you're doing... I don't know everything, but... Gosh, I'm a junior firefighter, and you have to know some things to belong. Good heavens, what do you think you're doing now? I'm going to take this pole and break that skylight window. Now, you stand to one side like oh. I'm doing. Oh! There. Instead of getting water or something and putting the fire out. You think we could bring up enough water to do any good? Oh, well, maybe not. But to smash that window, you must be out of your mind. Well, firemen don't bust things up for no reason, Mrs. Wilcox. Look at how the smoke and hot air is being pulled up through that broken window already. Why, I do believe it is. My brother Tim calls that ventilation. Instead of spreading all over the place now, the fire's being pulled up in just this one spot. But, but it's spreading to the, up the wall toward the eaves. Well, gee whiz, it's better to keep it up here on the roof and spreading all down through your house. Oh, if only those firemen would come, Jimmy. Oh, well, they are. You hear that? Boy, is that fast, huh, Mrs. Wilcox? Will they be in time? Well, it's just a matter of seconds now. They'll put it out just like that. Oh, don't you worry. Everything's all right. Here, look out this attic window. See? There's the pumper. And that's the engine company. And there's the hook and ladder company now, just turning in. They've got to hurry and do something. Oh, my gosh, Mrs. Wilcox, they already have. They attached the holes to that hydrant at the foot of the hill. Didn't you see it unwinding off the truck as it drove in? Look, two men just went in the front door. Yeah, now that's Chief Cody. My brother Tim was with him. Ah, that old fire's as good as ours. But what are the others doing? Why don't they help them? They are. Didn't you see them get that ladder around the other side of the house? They'll reach the window, and, and any minute you'll see a fireman poke his head in, and he'll have a hose, and... and... <gasps> Thank heaven, here they are. Oh, hiya, Tim. Hello there, Chief Cody. Uh, might have known we'd find your kid brother in the middle of things, Tim. Yes, sir. You and the lady keep out of our way, Jimmy. How's it look, Chief Cody? That chemical extinguisher you've got should do the job, Tim. Let her go. Yes, sir. Hey, you, Al. Get off that ladder and climb in through the window. Oh, never mind the line for now. Get that axe out of your belt and get ready for work. Chemicals will take care of this, Chief. How about outside on the roof? It's a shingle roof. We'll give it a good wetting as soon as you cut down the flames. Yes, sir. Now, get in there, Al. He's chopping through the roof. Make him stop. Now, listen, lady. As far as the eye can tell, your fire's as good as out. But it may have eaten its way in between... Ah, uh, fire's under control, Chief. Oh, good. Report to me downstairs when the men take over on the roof, Tim. Yes, sir. Mrs. Wilcox, you and Jimmy come with me. We'll find Trudy and the four of us will have a little talk. A few minutes later, Tim Collins joins his young brother and sister in the cluttered living room of the old mansion. Chief Cody is scratching his head and looking very puzzled. Now, look, Mrs. Wilcox, fires don't start all by themselves. At least... Well, how about it, Tim? Any chance of spontaneous combustion up there? Uh, no possibility, Chief. No oily rags or anything like that up there. Well, if so, that's about all that's missing. That attic's a fire hazard, Mrs. Wilcox. That's what Jimmy told her, Chief Cody. Now, you keep out of this, young woman. No, Jimmy's too excited to think straight. You tell us what happened, Trudy. Uh, now, Chief Cody, I've already told you what happened. I saw the children to the landing, and then I went back to the attic to, to sort a few things out. You say you'd left that lamp there by the closet? Yes, but uh, not close enough to catch anything on fire. I'm very careful. But you must have done something careless. I repeat, sir, I did absolutely nothing. I hadn't been back in the attic 30 seconds. I wasn't anywhere near the closet. But suddenly I heard a, a peculiar noise and I turned around to find it ablaze. I'm sorry, but fires don't just happen out of nowhere. Carelessness, accidents... Sometimes set deliberately. Of course. That's it. The fire was started before I returned to the attic. I just didn't see it till it blazed. What do you mean? They came here begging for something for their sale. Talking of fire, too, I might add. Why, that 
boy can't think of anything else. What are you getting at? That closet. It was set on fire. There's no other way. Somehow, just before they left, those children set my house on fire. Chief Cody and rookie fireman Tim Collins look at each other in stunned surprise. Old Mrs. Wilcox is in dead earnest, and a serious charge like this must be quickly disproved. But how? That's the question. To learn what happens next, be sure to listen to our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will be back to speak to each one of you boys and girls about an important subject. But first, another message of importance to all of you. Now, Chief Bob Cody with the special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. This is Chief Cody back again, boys and girls. You recall a short time ago when I mentioned the first place a fire inspector would go if he came to your house? That's right, the cellar. Well, the second place would be your attic. And see to it that inflammable liquids, turpentine, paints, things like that, are never stored in your attic. Well, that's all for now. Until next time, this is Chief Cody saying, so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! <laughs> Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.